Part 4. Is the Bible Timeless? Translated to become the all-time bestseller. If a book is timeless, it's read from one generation to the next, from one country to another, and by men and women of all ages. The most startling fact about the Bible is that it's the world's number one bestseller, and that's every year. Over 5 billion copies have sold worldwide since the first century. Quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, released in 1964, comes in second with 1.1 billion copies sold. This is followed by the Quran, released in the 7th century AD with 800 million copies sold. For the Bible to be the best-selling book of all times, it had to be translated. The Bible itself tells us that God's word never changes. Nevertheless, the language that it's been communicated in has changed. The original language of the Bible was Hebrew. But by the time of Christ, many Jews no longer knew Hebrew. They spoke Aramaic, which they learned while they were in exile. Or they spoke a common dialect of Greek called Koine Greek. And so the Septuagint translation of the Bible, named after the 70 scholars chosen to translate it, became the first known translation of the Hebrew Old Testament completed in 3 BC. By the second century AD, there were even more translations in various languages. Latin was the most popular because of the influence of the Roman Catholic Church. It was Pope Damascus who commissioned Jerome, a scholar of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, to make another translation in Latin starting around 383 AD. It was called the Latin Vulgate. Vulgate means common. This Bible was read by common men and women from the 4th century to the 15th century. Ironically, when Pope Damascus died, the Roman Catholic Church no longer supported Jerome's work. It would take another thousand years before the Vulgate could be made the official Roman Catholic Church Bible. It was Jerome's translation that became the basis for the early English translators. Since the Roman Catholic Church had supreme authority over people's religious lives, they wouldn't permit anyone else to translate the Bible into another language. But that changed when a dissident priest named John Wycliffe from Yorkshire, England, rejected the fact that the Roman Catholic Church was equal in authority to the Bible. John Wycliffe said that the Bible was the inerrant word of God and not any human institution. They defiantly used the Latin Vulgate to translate the Bible into English, but just before the translation was finished, John died of a stroke in 1384. Wycliffe's followers, called Lollards, finished the work and distributed handwritten copies all over England. These copies were used for more than a century until printed copies became available. The Wycliffe Bible had a huge impact on another priest from England named William Tyndale, born about a hundred years after John Wycliffe died. Tyndale's passion was to make the Bible available to English-speaking peoples, despite being at odds with the Roman Catholic Church. William, with the backing of a wealthy London merchant, moved to the safer environment of Germany to do his work. Tyndale's translation was vastly superior to Wycliffe's because he was able to work from the original languages of scripture rather than the Latin Vulgate. His work was finished at the end of 1525. It was printed in Cologne, Germany, and then smuggled back into England. Tyndale's New English Bible got two responses. From the common folks, there was nothing but enthusiasm. They could now read God's word for themselves and understand it in their own language. The Roman Catholic Church was in an outrage over it. 
they were certain that the common man reading and interpreting the Bible for themselves would open Pandora's box for error, misinterpretation, and heresy. They claimed that Tyndale's translations had thousands of errors and bought every copy they could to burn it. When the Roman Catholic Church finally released its iron fist control over the Bible, it opened the way for the King James Version to become the bestseller of all time. King James from Scotland became the King of England when the heirless Queen Elizabeth I died. He commissioned scholars to make an updated translation from the most recent manuscripts so that there could be a more accurate reading of scripture. This version was completed in 1611, and it was the standard English text until the revised version in 1885. In 1952, the Revised Standard Version came out, and since then, many more translations have been produced in English. So we have to ask the question, why are more translations needed? Well, that answer has two reasons. First, all languages change over time. New words are developed, and some old ones become obsolete. Second, New Greek and Hebrew manuscripts keep being discovered. It was only in 1947 that the greatest archaeological find of all time was discovered near the Dead Sea to the west of Jerusalem. Archaeologists found scripture manuscripts that were a thousand years older than the oldest that we had. Therefore, new translations have continued to emerge so that scripture can be understood by a greater number of people. What is it that makes Bible versions so different? Well, people study the Bible not as an end in itself, but so that they can know God and the revelation of his son, Jesus Christ. Some people who are serious students of the Bible want a translation that tries to follow word for word the original Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. These translations, like the Revised Standard Version, the New American Standard Bible, the English Standard Version, and the New King James Version, they all focus on being faithful to the original text, even though they're more difficult to read. This kind of translation is called formal equivalence. Most readers prefer translations that are written in dynamic equivalence, like the New International Version or the New Living Translation. These are much easier to read, which helps many more to readily comprehend the message of Scripture. Dynamic equivalence is when scholars translate the Bible phrase by phrase without trying to translate every word, yet still staying true to the original text. Still other readers prefer paraphrase versions like the Living Bible or the Message. Paraphrase is when the translators restate the biblical text in the ways that we might say it today. They are easy to read, but aren't meant to follow the exact wording of the original text. We are privileged today, especially in the West, to have access not only to scripture, but to a translation that meets our way of learning. While there is still much of the world that needs a translation in their languages, it is being worked on by those committed to seeing the Bible available to every person. In the next video, we're going to honor a man who's done more to advance not only the Bible, but the entire world, but a man who never got the credit he deserved.